I'm MM and I ask a lot of questions. I'm Pia and I don't have a filter. We'll be asking questions you dare not ask. And giving answers that might be a little too honest. So listen up, come and eavesdrop. This is The, the Cheese Miss Table. Table. everyone so in the past i would only know of a few people who would be in relationships with foreigners here or abroad you know as if it's not a common thing among filipinos but now i have more and more friends entering relationships with foreigners mostly from online dating i even have friends who are already married to foreigners and are already living the best time of their lives abroad well, personally, I never dated a foreigner. Well, nothing against them, but I do prefer Filipinos because I don't really like the extra challenge, you know, and also the extra English that comes along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I want in my relationships to be easy. Well, the question that most of us Filipinas have, or Filipinos have also, is what's the difference between dating a Filipino and dating a foreigner? So I'm really lucky that my friend here, Pia, <laughs> is, <laughs> is in a relationship with a foreigner and she could shed a lot of light to us uh, naive Filipinas about dating foreigners. So Pia! <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want to talk about this, but we have to because, you know, there are a lot of Filipinos who are in need of uh, information about dating uh, foreigners <laughs> in general. So can you first give us a quick uh, overview of who <laughs> your boyfriend is? <laughs> overview, it's ano lang corporate world. Lang, <laughs> In summary. Also, yes, in summary. So you're kidding. No, kidding. So... <laughs> Uh, so tell me more about who who your current boyfriend is. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so shy. <laughs> it's okay. So for everyone's knowledge, this is Pia's first time to publicly talk about the love of her life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um. So Tom, his name's Tom. <laughs> He's American. He's technically my second boyfriend ever at the age of 33. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so I met him on Tinder. Um, at the time, he was still in America. And he, he travels around, so he's an iron worker. Um, he's normally based in Florida, but at the time that we met, he was in Colorado. And he was coming out of a not-so-good relationship himself. So... He wanted to visit the Philippines because his uncle and his cousin, I think, served in the Philippines during World War II. So he has always been very excited about it. He has traveled elsewhere, but he has never traveled to Asia. So he went on Tinder Premium, <laughs> um, changed his location to the Philippines, and then found me. And so... It started 2018. Oh, so long ago. <laughs> we, we matched 2018. Mm-hmm. And at first, I didn't think it was going to be anything. Anything. Because, um, again, on Tinder, you, you, you're you told a lot of things. And <laughs> promises by a lot yeah. of people. Um, so when he said that he was interested in the Philippines, he was coming, I really didn't think he would. Um, but he was a good... I had very, very good conversations with him. So normally, I wouldn't extend the conversation with anyone who isn't Mm -hmm. coming or, like, confirmed to come to the Philippines. Um, But it was a fun conversation with him. So it extended for months and months until January the following year, which was 2019, he sent me his ticket to come to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And we met physically in March. Um, and then it was funny because we had, uh, we're not aligned on when we became a, an official couple. Mm, <laughs> because mm-hmm. for him, when he came to the Philippines in March, yeah, it was his confirmation that he wants to be in a relationship with me. But to me, I've never met him. And that mm. was our first meeting. So to me, that was like a first date more than... A confirmation of a relationship. Mm-hmm. So for him, we became a couple in March, 
And for me, it was maybe May, June. <laughs> Because <laughs> who knows? What if I didn't yeah. like him in person? You know, people are different online versus when they you meet them in real life. Mm-hmm, But mm-hmm. luckily, um, he is a much better person in real life. Also a good person <laughs> online as well. But, you know, um, everything worked out. So we have been together. I don't know officially anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so we've been together since March, April, May, somewhere around that time of last year, and we're still together. So, <laughs> so it's it's not the first time that you dated a foreigner, right? No, no. So have you dated other foreigners? Like, how many? How many? No, no, not we're not talking. <laughs> uh, did you did you just date foreigners exclusively? <laughs> not not intentionally. Um, hmm. But most of them, <laughs> I don't know. First of all, I I never really entertained the idea of dating till I was I don't know late twenties because I'm mm. a career woman, blah blah blah, and I realized nah, that's not so fun after all. <laughs> so I started you know entertaining dates, but I I didn't know how to meet people. Or where to meet them? Mm, mm. By the time I was late twenties, everybody I knew already, you know, was in a relationship somewhere, and then those who were still single, I didn't like. So, and then I didn't know how to meet people. Like, where do you go? What do you do? What do you say? So I, and then at the time, also that was the um, boom of online dating apps. Mm, so that's mm-hmm. what I started to use. Yeah. Um, So no, I I did it. I think in my lifespan, uh, three Filipinos. Okay. And then everyone else would be a foreigner. But mm. again, it wasn't intentional. It just so happened that I preferred them. <laughs> you know? Is it is it a preference or is it just really because uh, you met better foreigners than Filipinos? In a way, it's a preference. Mm. Um, there are a lot. There are big differences when it comes mm. to dating Filipinos and yeah. foreigners. And again, I'm not generalizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because I I haven't really had too many encounters with Filipinos. But at least for the ones that I've met, maybe I was just un, you know, unlucky about the Filipinos I've met. But, um, for example, I have a very strong personality, mm. and No matter what Filipinos say about, oh, I like independent women. I mm. like it when women know what they want, blah, blah, blah. It's not always true. Yeah. So, um, siguro, I, maybe they, they just never met someone as strong or ha- who has as strong a personality as I do. Um, so, they do like women who like what they want and know what they mm. want. But mm-hmm. not the way I express it. <laughs> I have no filter. I don't sugarcoat yeah. or whatever. If you don't want something, I don't care. Um, so for Filipinos, it's not, they don't like it that much. They still go for the dalagang Filipina like you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, but, but that's right. That's right. Because right. look at you. Yeah. You, uh, you have, you. I think you, yeah, you've never dated a, a foreigner, right? Um, and I think you're the ideal Filipina girlfriend. No, but I, what I also dated, uh, well, I only dated Filipinos, and then um, you're right that you know, we're we're coming off very strong to them that they get intimidated most of the time. Um, some of the the guys I was with, uh, they. They left. They left me. No, they, <laughs> they left me because I think they found us well too strong, too independent, and we need a guy who will be able to take that uh, strength, that independence, and not be too insecure. Because yeah. you know, they they also have uh, an ego that we have to, to sort of take care of. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. And I think that's a difference that Filipinos and foreigners have. Yeah. See the yeah. difference between you and me, because you are also a very independent woman, but mm. you're kind. 
<laughs> so you're not kind. <laughs> I'm not very kind. You're, you're kind to animals. <laughs> I am. They deserve the kindness. But because you're very meek and mild-mannered. Well, not meek, mm. mild-mannered. You know. Mm. So when you have a disagreement or whatever, you know how to not lose your temper. <laughs> mm. Okay. I'm very demanding. I can be very assertive. Um, and I'm really just, I can be a lot to handle. I mean, I admit that. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I thought I'm a lot to handle. No, eh. <laughs> a lot more, 10 times. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but for, but for, for Filipinos, again, it's, it's too much, you know. They, they, yeah. I feel like, at least for, again, for the ones that I've dated, I feel like they still expect a level of subservience. Mm. You know, mm. and, uh, they feel like they still have to be the lead no matter how strong or how independent or how self-made I have become. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still a, a, an underlying expectation that the man has to be the one in the lead. You know, and there I feel like there's some kind of unspoken competition if it's a Filipino and maybe you're right. Maybe it's coming from a level of insecurity. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. But I never, well, not really never, but in the successful dates I've had with foreigners, they didn't really care about career. I think that's another thing. For Filipinos, we mm. hear as a status mm. status um, symbol. Um, but for the foreigners that I've dated before, they don't really see career or lack thereof as you know uh, an identification of who they are so mm. the relationship then becomes about what we like doing mm. what we um you know certain interests where we have traveled things that we like doing together and issues about career or money or who is the breadwinner or whatever never becomes a thing that we have to deal with and yeah i think for filipinos that's a sensitive um topic to to talk mm. about in, mm. in a relationship especially mm. if the woman or the, if the woman is the one who's a little bit more um advanced in terms yeah. of career progression like again here and also careers in america or in other countries um have different levels you know yeah. if I, if tom was an iron worker here he would be earning what 200 pesos no maybe around 500 500 Mm. 500 pesos a day Mm -mm. um and that's if you are a legal worker because sometimes you're just contractual and you get even less than minimum wage Mm -mm. um but in america uh blue collar jobs earn higher than office jobs right so he would his monthly salary is bigger than mine in terms mm. of dollars and peso, yeah. but I own a company and he's an iron worker. So the I, so the the career stereotypes are immediately mm. broken mm. down, yeah. yeah, and it doesn't matter anymore. So that's one sensitive topic that we have to you know we don't have to deal with anymore. Mm-hmm. Aside from the fact that foreigners or at least Americans are really just more straightforward. So yeah. sure. um, if I don't like something. I will just tell him he won't get hurt. Mm. He will say, okay, and then we deal with it. But again, from my experience with Filipinos, not just actually Filipino dates, but Filipinos in general, <laughs> <laughs> like you can't tell them what's wrong. You have to yeah. think about how to say it in a nice way, how to go around, how to time it. Yeah, yeah that timing. Yeah. And I don't want to have to deal with that. I mean, I deal with a lot of it already with all the <laughs> Filipinos around me. Um, so I'd rather be more carefree and myself. <laughs> um, and I, it, it's easier for me to do that with a foreigner mm-hmm. than a Filipino. Yeah. Uh, how about the family? Uh, are, they, are they close to their families, just like we are? <laughs> Tom's family is not... Oh, okay. Tom's family is not a typical Filipino family, but it's a typical mm-hmm. American family, I would say. Okay, okay. So his parents have been separated. Um, he has a brother. Um, so there's just four of them, parents and then an older brother. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he's okay with some of his cousins, but yeah. not like Filipino families where, you know, your cousins are like your siblings and mm-hmm. you, you know, see each other and talk with each other all the freaking time. Like when I was younger, I would see my cousins every Friday. It's a normal mm. thing. First of all, the, the bigness of the family is, is not the same. Um, but he has a good relationship with his mom, has a good mm-hmm. relationship with his dad and his brother. But not together. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So he would go to his mom to help with his child. He would go to his brother to um, go surfing or whatever. He'd go to yeah. his dad for dinner. But they, it's not a cohesive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I, I, I'm not used to. Mm-hmm. Every time I th- talk to him about how, how to talk to my parents about him or... Um, you know, things that I have to do for my parents, he doesn't always get it because he, yeah. you know, it, their, their concept of family is different from, from ours. I don't know. I mean, is Gino close to his family? Yeah. Uh, Gian, Gian to- <laughs> it's Gino. <laughs> Sorry, Gino. <laughs> Gian close to his uh, He is, he is. And he's very close. He's, he has a big uh, immediate family also in uh, we always go there every weekend. You would spend a lot of time um, with everyone. So I think that's also one of the reasons why I, I chose to uh, date Filipinos except instead of or except instead of foreigners. Uh, yeah, so that's why. Because I, I like that, you know, I don't need to have the challenge of adjusting because mm-hmm. I have other problems in life. I don't want to... I don't want to have so much to think of uh, in terms of my relationship. <laughs> I, I wanted to be so hard, but eh. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of adjustments, what what adjustment did you have to make? Hmm. Huh? You know what? Not so hmm. much. <laughs> oh, that's good. Maybe because again. You know, I have a friend, Stephen. He he lives in New York. He's a mm. Filipino, but he grew up in America. He said that he feels like I was born in the wrong country. I think <laughs> I am. <laughs> so it's not much of an adjustment for me. Um, maybe again about the family thing. Mm. I'm just worried because, um, like here, your extended family is your help. You know, if you yeah. need help, if you need comfort. You have a lot of people to choose from aside from your friends, and of course, mm-hmm. you can your friends, but family is still different. Um, so my 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 little worry is when mm-hmm. I I won't have family there. He doesn't have yeah. a, a relationship with his family either, or at least not like how we have it here. So I'm I don't know how that would feel mm-hmm. like you know, mm-hmm. you don't have that huge support system that I'm used to having here. Yeah. But in terms of adjusting to um, to dating a foreigner, um, I'm pretty much I've pretty much fell, fallen into the relationship um, naturally. I think like I think that's why it's still working now mm-hmm. um, because um, the, he doesn't have any issues with. Um, my type A personality because that's usually what the guys run away from mm. when they date mm. me. Um, but he doesn't have an issue with that. He doesn't have an issue with how successful my career has become. He doesn't have an issue with me not having a filter because he doesn't have a fil- filter. Mm. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's, you know, he doesn't get hurt or he doesn't get offended by anything easily. Yeah. Um, Maybe one thing is um, there is a se- there is a sensitivity that I still would like to have. You know, mm. one thing that I can never explain to him is tampo. <laughs> mm, okay. There is no. I don't think there's any uh, direct translation. There's no him, translation to that. Right? Yeah. So uh, he doesn't really understand what it is, why mm. it happens, mm. <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> So, the closest I could explain to him is silent treatment. Mm. So, but for him, like, if I give him the silent treatment, he's like, 
okay, she doesn't want to talk to me. So he's not going to talk to me. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm tampon. The mood. I'm going through something. <laughs> Even if I say I'm okay, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I think men are like that in general. You have to tell them that there's something going on with you or else they're never gonna know. <laughs> I guess. So I guess that's not a foreigner thing. But it's at least foreigner. if you know, if you say, nagtampo ako, get mm, They would understand. Uh-uh. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Blah, blah, blah. But when I tell Tom that I was upset, he's just gonna say, then why did you tell me? <laughs> it becomes my fault. And then yeah. I end up saying sorry. Which sucks. <laughs> Not you fall, you fallen into the trap. <laughs> that is not know, the goal. <laughs> I know that trap. Guys are so good doing that. <laughs> and then he'd say, "Well, I'm not a mind reader, so if you're if you don't tell me what's wrong, I'm never gonna know." And he doesn't say it in a way that he's sorry for it. Mm, Again, mm. Filipinos would be like. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not yeah. a reader. So if you have anything wrong, if there's anything wrong, you tell me. No, he would say it like, well, I'm not a mind reader. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying sometimes. <laughs> so while I like the lack of insecurity and sensitivity towards certain things, there is still that um, emotional sensitivity that a lot of foreigners don't have. I think mm. because Filipinos in general are very emotional. We're an yeah. emotional nation. <laughs> we are. We're a very puso country. Yeah. yeah. To them, no. I mean, everything follows some kind of logic. So Mm-mm. it's good for a lot of things. And it's good, it's good for the longevity of our relationship. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, when I'm on my period and I'm excited, <laughs> Like, come we on, have to doctor. understand. <laughs> <laughs> like the smallest things would really make me cry. And then he's like, "Why are you crying?" <laughs> mm, mm. I'm very emotional, and he just doesn't get it, so it gets annoying sometimes. Um, but other than anyway, other than that, <laughs> I really prefer the relationship I have with Tom or with partners over. Filipinos because I mean I, it, 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 it's obviously a very different thing because to me a foreigner relationship is less work to you mm. a Filipino relationship <laughs> is less, less work. work so you know there's I, I never know I would never know because I never I never dated a, a foreigner <laughs> it's just a stigma I have in my in my head mm. yeah the kind of relationship people have really depends on what they're looking for Mm. Um, and I really don't I'm sorry but I really don't understand why um, a lot of strong independent Filipinas would go for a Filipino <laughs> <laughs> I guess again because of my personal experience I'm not yeah, I mean, yeah. all Filipino men are, are not good but I don't know like I mean is Gian perfect <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to find the guy who is at a higher or at the same level in terms of career, in terms mm-hmm. of um, wealth, everything. When when you're an independent woman, you can't go. Um, I don't want to say that <laughs> you can't go uh, like three notches lower because <laughs> they can't. They can't take it. <laughs> see, you see what I mean? They're able to take it. Like mm-hmm. when they see you succeeding in your career, and they're still, you know sitting there I don't know that's just my experience <laughs> but, I, 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 I completely agree I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will go no that's not true or well. <laughs> or like um, I can't remember who I was talking to but her partner was um, as you said three notches mm-hmm. lower <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning she was she was all for it like she would say it's not an issue it's not a big deal and she's there to support him and she was throughout the whole thing and then the guy ended up breaking up with her <laughs> I, I can't remember what the reason was but it was 
um, it was along the lines of they're not on the same page, whatever, mm. whatever. And I was telling my friend, of course you're not on the same page. You're not <laughs> higher. <laughs> so I, it's, I don't know again if it's a generalization, but for women, mm. it's easier for women to accept that um, arrangement, I would say, that you're not on equal footing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's guys who are more... Yeah. It's an issue for them. Yeah, right? Yeah. Even if the girl's fine with it, it's mm. a lot of pride going into a relationship. Yep. Um, and again, for Tom, he has a lot of pride over a lot of things. But the pride he has is more for um, making sure his future and his kids' future and our future, eventual future mm. together, is good. It has mm. nothing to do with who he is in comparison to me. Mm. It's really mm-hmm. how he is living his own life. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just thought of something. It, co- it could also be a matter of being able to have traveled outside mm. the Philippines. Yeah. Um, because he has traveled many to many countries before, and in, especially in Eastern Europe, which again... Mm-hmm the economy in Eastern Europe is not that great. So yeah. he has seen, you know, different levels of, of quality of life. So it also is a matter of exposure to, you know, things outside of what you grew up with. Hmm. Um, for me, I have always been very different. My mom called me the black sheep of the family, which I think is not true. <laughs> But she says that because my personality is very different. Yeah. So they're very, very, very Filipino. Like they will, um, they're careful with their words. If it's a family member, they will try not to confront, mm, um, mm-hmm. you know, all these things. But I'm not like that. Like I, yeah. also, I'm a Libra. So yeah. to me, it's justice, you know, right or wrong. Black <laughs> and I have a very strong personality, so I will say it. Um, and to my mom, it's such a, uh, it's such a disrespectful personality mm. for her. Mm. Um, and then I also traveled a lot, mm. so my my non Filipino ness just expanded. <laughs> <laughs> you became a woman of the world. <laughs> exactly. I'm a citizen yes. of the world. Yes. Um, so it's hard. Now that I'm talking about it, I think there's just a lot of restrictions and mm, expectations mm, um, mm. coming from society in terms of how to behave as a Filipino. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just not that. <laughs> yeah. And so maybe you're, you're getting a lot of judgment now. Are mm-hmm. you? You are? Um, from different people, and it's different mm-hmm. judgment. Mm-hmm. There's a reason. I mean, up until today, <laughs> I haven't really talked about Tom. Mm. Um, the only people who know about him are my high school barcada, my college barcada, and you. Mm. <laughs> and then some of my really, really close friends who don't live in the Philippines anymore. Um, because there are a lot of uh, judgment with first of all online dating second of all having mm. a foreigner boyfriend and third of all being in long distance relationship <laughs> so, mm. Mm. All, three, um, <laughs> all three elements of yeah you know what makes a relationship difficult are in my relationship mm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. super difficult um but from my family for most of all they're the ones that i'm more most worried about um, admitting about or not really admitting telling them telling <laughs> <laughs> telling them about Tom you know so Tom's the second one right so when I in my first boyfriend was um, uh, Dutch I met him when I traveled to Vietnam and then um, I was going to, going to visit him over New Year and in the Philippines New Year is a family the artist yeah. in my family it's a family celebration you mm-hmm. would not miss yeah um so i i had to tell her because i can't think of any other reason why i would go to vietnam over new year so i told her that i'm dating someone who's dutch and her first oh i told her okay i'm gonna tell you something but you're not mm-hmm. allowed to react until i'm done <laughs> so <laughs> i told her i met someone in vietnam he's dutch he's a teacher he's blah 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 
And then when I finished, her first words were, oh my God, I don't think I'm ready for a foreigner. <laughs> I mean, I'm the one dating if you don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> so her so her first question was are you sure he doesn't have a wife back home <laughs> and I'm like I think I am but now that you mention it I don't know because I never asked if he had the wife <laughs> okay okay um so and then so I went and then eventually we broke up And mm. when I came back from Vietnam from that trip, she never asked anything about it. So I never said anything. And then we broke up and then months passed. And then the only time I I uh, had a hint that my mom was still thinking about it was my cousin told me that my mom mm. told my cousin's mom uh, that she thinks I'm dating someone, but she can't remember. It might be someone from work. <laughs> so... I don't know if, you know, <laughs> she just rejected the idea, <laughs> so she completely forgot what it was, or she didn't want to say that he's Dutch, that I met mm. him somewhere. Online, yeah. Online. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what her motivations were for saying that. But, you know, there's this huge block yeah. Um, yeah. with her when it comes to dating To dating and to dating a foreigner mm. and again when I'm, I'm hesitating talking to her about Tom because she would expect number one for us to get married soon and then for him to give me a, uh, give her a grandchild and um, and number three I don't I get I don't think she'll understand you know we we've only met Tom and I have only been physically together twice when he was here for a month in March and I was there for mm -hmm. a month over Christmas to New Year. Mm -hmm. um, so even for me, that's not, you know, a good amount of time really to solidify everything. Um, but it's just we're taking things as we go along. Mm -hmm. But also, it's not just our families, because if our families are, are judgmental, I guess, foreigners, foreigner moms are a thousand percent mm. more judgmental against Filipinas. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, Rob's mom, my, my ex, and Tom's mom, both mm -hmm. of them, when they found out that they were dating me, mm. both of them said, are you sure? Because you have to be careful about Filipinas dating foreigners. And they were implying that I was after their money or after, mm -hmm. you know, getting out of the Philippines or having a better life. Mm -hmm. And when they told me that, I got a little annoyed because, excuse me, I have more money than your sons. <laughs> <laughs> I can take care of myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's what they said, both of them. I mean, I would understand. So uh, my ex's mom, uh, they live in a small farm far, far, far away from yeah. the city in ne Netherlands. And they're not really accustomed to, um, you know, members of the community leaving and coming back, or they're not accustomed to travel or differently mm. colored people even. Um, so I understand because maybe her worldview is very limited. But then when Tom's mom said the same thing, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's when I realized it might really be a stigma against mm -mm -mm -mm. Filipino women. Mm -mm. And you can't really blame them because... Yeah, it's true for a lot for of a yeah, lot yeah. of people. Also, that stupid show, 90 Day Fiance. Because <laughs> I remember um, uh, when I was planning to or preparing to visit Tom already, mm. the episode, uh, the the season of 90 Day Fiance was the one where, um, what's his name, No Neck Ed, no Neck Ed. met Rose, who's yeah. a Filipina, right? <laughs> And they had the same, um, they had the same judgments against Rose because is mm. she asking me for money? Is her sister mm -mm. asking me for money? So Tom's mom was watching it. What? And, <laughs> yeah, she was watching it. And then 
Tom told her that I was coming, and she's like, "Oh my, oh, you don't want to go through a 90 Day Fiance episode." So I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's another thing that I, I mean, but when they met me, of course they love me, mm. and it's actually very <laughs> obvious how initially concerned Tom's mom was. Because when I when she met me, she was almost grilling me about mm-hmm. my work. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then so when Tom, Tom told her that I was finally visiting, and she's like, "Really? Does she already have a visa?" And Tom goes, <laughs> "Yeah, she has a visa." And Tom's mom goes, "Ah," and Tom goes, "Yeah, she has a lot of friends in America, and she even has family in Canada." And <laughs> Tom's mom goes, "Oh, really? She's <laughs> in Canada?" <laughs> Oh my god! So it's actually super funny. And then when I finally met her, she was grilling me about my job because Tom told mm-hmm. him I told her that I had a company. So she was asking about the company. And here goes again the the never ending problem of how do you explain PR? There's no explanation. <laughs> so I was trying to explain it to her, um, but eventually it was fine. I mean, no matter the you know the hesitations, mm-hmm. she's still Western. So yeah. she's still a lot more open-minded about these things, but I don't think my mom will be. Mm-hmm. Um, she even because Tom would go to work and I'll be left at home, so she would come over and then she'd pick me up. She'd bring me to the mall or to the outlet stores and stuff like that. So she was very, very, very nice to me. Um, but I don't think my mom would <laughs> be as yeah. open-minded. <laughs> First of all, if Tom comes here. He would be staying with me in my place. Yeah, not <laughs> and that already is a big X. <laughs> <laughs> What? You're not married and you live you're together. You're staying together. <laughs> and you're traveling already, together. Exactly. I can already imagine. Like, so where is he gonna sleep? And I'm gonna say in my bed. In your bed? <laughs> Can't he sleep in your in your, in your room? Bed? <laughs> in your room with the doors closed. <laughs> So it's so hard, and then of course there's another layer of judgment with strangers because mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. they have that stigma of Filipinas dating foreigners. Yeah. Um. So every time I'm out with Tom or any foreigner that I've ever dated, I make sure that I speak in straight English, that I'm very well dressed because I don't want to, you know, be be called out. For being that kind of of Filipina, and then, so I was very conscious about making making a show, actually, of me being at the same level, and that's what's mm-hmm. unfair, you know. Like, yeah, it is. Filipinos see a white person, they automatically elevate the status <laughs> of that white person, no matter what you know what he does in in, yep. in his life. So I. Really made a show out of making sure we're at in on equal footing. That I'm not after him for his money, mm-hmm. um, because I was very conscious about that for a while. But again, Tom is like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> so eventually, yeah. I stopped caring. But when I was first starting all these partners, I was asking another friend of mine. So he's he's very he's as straightforward as I am, but he's allowed to be that because he's a Filipino man. <laughs> anyway, so I told him about all these things that I was thinking about, and then he goes, "Pia, yeah, you don't look like an island girl, because first of all, island girls are skinny." <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So there are a lot of things that. I'm conscious about maybe that's also why I haven't really come out mm, mm. <laughs> to so everybody yeah. that I have uh, an American boyfriend because mm. I already know I can already anticipate the things that they will ask or yeah. either ask or um, think about but be afraid to ask me. So number one is it authentic? Mm, mm. Is it a real relationship? Yeah. Again, because we haven't really seen each other for more than the two months that we were together. Um, a lot of people don't count the online version, like talking mm-hmm. every. I mean, we talk three times a day. We talk about all these things, you know. But for some people, that's not um, that's not a real part of a relationship or a real connection. 
then I'm also sure they will doubt the longevity of this. Yeah. Especially in a pandemic, mm. you know, and that I, we don't see each other and the future is very uncertain in terms of when he will be able to come here yeah, and I'll be able to yeah. go there and all that stuff. Um, so these are just a lot of questions. Not that I don't want to answer them and not that I don't mm. have an answer for them. It's just why do I have to explain myself? You know, if I'm yeah. dating a Filipino, people wouldn't have these questions. People look down. Yeah, people won't care. They would assume that things are going okay and things are going towards a certain direction. Mm. But w- when people date a foreigner, there are all these question marks about, you know, authenticity and longevity that I just don't want to deal with because why? Why do I have to explain myself to you? Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So that's really just why I've I've kept Tom a secret for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> when Tom was here in March, you were one of the two people that he yeah. met. Nobody else knew that he was here, <laughs> but you're one of the two. So how? What did you think of him? Honestly, I love Tom. I I really like him for you. I. I think he balances you out. He balances out your pagkadaldal and your, and your being... Uh, you mean he balances out my daldal? He balances you out. Like when you're super daldal already and when you're talking about a lot of things. Like he would ask the right questions. He would okay, okay, calm okay. you down. And then he would know how to answer. And like... Wow, it's for the first time I met a guy who can actually match Pia. <laughs> what do you mean, match Pia? <laughs> I was shocked the only time, like you were quiet and then he was just holding your hand. I'm like, you know, I don't say that. <laughs> and then you were so cute. Like, so like, I'm so happy for you. And yeah, I, I like him. I like him a lot. I like that he's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's very he's smart. Of course he's smart. Who I like I like talking to him. <laughs> he makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'll yeah. go for a dumb dumb. <laughs> of course. And and if you talk three times a day, what are you gonna talk about if you're not smart, right? You know, that's what I'm curious. I, I'm really curious. How how does it go like in a day? Okay, um, he's 12 hours behind, so that's an easy tracking for me. Um, so on a normal day, like on a weekend, he goes to work at 6.30 in the morning there, so it's 6.30 here. So it's actually a good time because mm. I'm done with my day and then I'll just wait for him to wake up and go to work. So we'll talk then, and then he goes to work, and then at 9 o'clock or 9.30, he goes on a 15-minute break, so we talk then. And then at midnight, here, noon, there, wow. is his lunch break. So we talk then, too. Um, so, I mean, we don't always talk about a lot of things. Sometimes mm. we just have each other on the phone while I'm watching TV and while he's going through Facebook mm. or whatever. Um, but we do talk a lot about a lot of stupid things because <laughs> Tom is a very smart um, and his memory is very, very good. So he loves history. He knows a mm. lot more about Philippine history than I do. It was a little embarrassing. Remember when we went to Corregidor? Yeah. He was explaining to me Mm-mm. what happened. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I really know. don't know. And then I brought him to Intramuros because he's super interested in World War II. Mm. And, um, the, so World War II for Corregidor and the Spanish time in the Philippines. So I brought him to <laughs> Intramuros and I wanted him to experience the Carlos Seldran tour. But at the time, mm-hmm. Carlos Seldran already passed away. So he didn't experience an amazing yeah. tour with Carlos Seldran, right? Um, and I've been on that tour twice. So I thought, I can wing this. I think I can, mm. I can do it. <laughs> And we went on it, and I'm like, I can't remember, but something happened here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just, I can't, I cannot. I'm, it's so embarrassing for me that I don't know our, our history that well. Mm. And that speaks a lot for, I, I think that's true for a lot of Filipinos. That's why we never learn from our mistakes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
he knows a lot of these random trivia. So mm. in short, he he has a deep chest of small talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. And because he knows all of these things, he's also great at geography. Like you would know the most <laughs> random countries. So he has a lot of these tiny information. And the good thing is, again, because his experience is so different from mine, everything he already knows is new to me. And it's mm-hmm. always a conversation topic mm-hmm. for both of us. And everything I already yeah. know is mostly new to him. But yep. it's also not all the time. Um Again, it is every day. So sometimes, you know, you just run out of things to say. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And because we're in a lockdown, I've run out of... Nothing happens in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so every time, every time he asks, so how was your day? I'm like, are you mocking me? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. I was just watching Netflix. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so it's good. It's good. That's why, I, again, that's why... It lasted this long because I can't mm-hmm. be in a relationship with someone I can't talk to. <laughs> is there a where you don't have a language barrier? You're, you're <laughs> no, actually, there is. There is really? a language barrier, even if it's English, because um, you know how Filipinos have different words for different emotions, hmm. right? And that's I think that's why people have a hard time learning Filipino because one word can mean different things depending on the exact var- um the exact variant of word that mm-hmm. you use. so our, the language barrier with tom is um again it's the sensitivity to it um so i guess it's also my fault because as filipinos you want drama right so yeah. when i say something this sometimes it's not really what i mean i can't remember what it is right now but the the simplest one is If he asks, "Are you okay?" and I said, mm. "Yeah," that means I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. <laughs> and English, so he, he, doesn't he doesn't pick less. that up. Yeah. He doesn't pick that up very well. He's starting to learn better. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with, um, so if I say, you know, I'm just gonna go to bed, <laughs> and then go, "Okay, good night, babe." <laughs> annoying like Arr! but I already said I was gonna go so I have to put the phone down <laughs> but eventually he will send me a message oh. and because I think it, it just registers late mm-hmm. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. he will send me a message and when he sends that message he understands everything like he would tell me okay you're mad because of this and I'm sorry because of this and blah 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 blah, blah. Yeah. so he completely gets it after a while but <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes some time for him to understand that and then of course as Filipinos we have to learn how to not do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you have to say it in a better way yeah yeah because it's, it's a different set of uh, values different set of ideas yeah yeah and, and again it's yeah it's and what keeps the relationship going yes that's true because mm-hmm. you're discovering something new every day <laughs> Yeah, right. again, I mean, these differences are good for me mm. uh, because of the personality that I have. Um, but I can also imagine a lot of Filipinas I know who wouldn't be okay dating mm. a partner like Tom with all his independence, all his, um, he's also very assertive in his own way. Um, there are a lot of things that we care about that he doesn't, and to me, mm. that's fine. Um, but I can already, I can imagine not. What I'm saying is, dating a foreigner is definitely not for everybody. Yeah. Um, and if you're sen, if you're a sensitive Filipina, you're definitely not going to survive a foreign mm. relationship. Mm. <laughs> but dating a foreigner is very difficult sometimes for a lot of people not for me all the time but there are challenges to mm, mm-hmm. you know any relationship whether it's a filipino it's with a filipino or with a foreigner it's uh it always comes with its unique set of challenges yeah it's just a matter of which challenge you want to deal with <laughs> mm-hmm.
That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. And I think as a, I think as a Filipino or any Filipino who would want to get into a relationship with a foreigner, they shouldn't have the same expectations mm. that they have in dating a, a Filipino. You can't be dating a foreigner expecting to have the same values and same personality as a, a Filipino. So you yeah. have to know that. That's yeah. a very good point. That's a very good mm. point. Because you won't have those. <laughs> Yeah. So in any relationship, you just really have to focus on the more important things, you know, and the relationship will just thrive beyond any type of judgment. So you may be a foreigner, a Filipino, whatever you may be, you just do what you do, you love who you love, and everything will uh, fall in place. The Cheese Miss Table.